that no supper dicks a special secret in the house it's friday hell yeah get you a smoke i got hot pour you a fucking cold one it's friday we have something very special you might have already look at that you've already seen it ladies and gentlemen on a friday it's hickok john hickok from hickok 45 what's up YouTube channel with over 5 million subscribers. John and his father are regularly fucking shit up with guns. And I I asked uh, John to come out to my place today, hang out at the gun range. That's pretty badass, wasn't it? Oh, it was great. We shot a machine gun. Yeah, we made the Gold family. We (laughs) did have a, a small family of white people. You can see on the back. And, uh... We first turned them ocean blue. Yep. And then we added some yellow, and then we just went ahead and covered them up in gold. You can still see some of those other colors. It was an art decorating video. Uh, if you haven't seen that, go over to my regular main channel and check out that Hickok and Jessup art and gun video with a special appearance with an M60. Now, that's an amazing gun, that M60. It is. I love it. Now you built that. Well, I didn't. I didn't build it, so uh, the parts are interchangeable. Okay. So to a certain degree, yeah. I, I so I have these different parts kits, so I can convert it from like the original configuration that, that you've seen in all the Vietnam movies, and then I can also convert it to what I call the Rambo Two gun, right. which is the shorter one with the vertical grip that he used in Rambo Two. And then I have another kit where I can make it like uh, like more mod, like the Navy SEAL gun from the 1990s. So it just kind of depends on your mood. Yeah, exactly. How I'm feeling yeah. that day, you know? Yeah. Now, um, we should have brought some in, but when you said Rambo, it makes me think of how he wore the... Uh, yeah, the, the belts. The belts. Crossed them, yeah. Had two cro- crosses. They, they used to really do that back in the day. Why would they cross them up? Just to look more evil? Yeah, that, that's number one. Number two would be uh, it's convenient because it's like it's right there on your person. Also, it uh, it disperses the weight a lot. It better. keeps them from probably dangling if they're just hanging off the side. They get yeah. caught up in your girlfriend or something like yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. But if you crisscross them, you can move around. Yeah. And what's funny is they say like uh, military guys will, will say not to do that. <laughs> but if you look at any Have like sex with the belt on. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, okay. But it's like how are you supposed to impress your lady if you. That's what she wants. She wants the fucking yeah. Rambo treatment. Yeah. That's what you do. You go, you take off exactly. your shirt, and you're a big, strapping, sexy son of a bitch. So then you put a couple of those brass right across your titties. She knows you're ready for battle. Okay. But the real guys would say, don't cross them up. Well, some people say that because they can get uh, dirty. The links can sort of bend or whatever. But if you look at old photos from Vietnam, like, they were all doing it. So it must have worked. Also, the badass factor. Exactly. It looks badass. Yeah. Yeah. Well, cheers to you. We're drinking some cold ones on a Friday. We just came in from the gun range, so it's time to start getting uh, fucked up. All right. (laughs) So, hell yeah, we shot a shotgun that was badass, that shockwave. Yeah, Mossberg shockwave. Those are sweet. Now, do they all come with that little uh, tiny... Now, that was yeah. like the fucking Terminator grip. Yeah, <laughs> yeah kind of. I mean, that's the whole deal with those is like because of the, the, the bullshit ATF rules and all that kind of stuff, um, you can't have a shotgun with a barrel under than 18 inches if it has a stock on it. Okay. But somebody figured out a few years ago that if you make the gun short enough, it makes it, it puts it into a different classification where it's okay. technically not a shotgun. It's very strange and convoluted, but essentially... As long as you don't add a, add to that grip, as long as you leave it how it is, then yeah. it's legal. I don't know how you. I mean, you could t- have any less grip. I mean, there <laughs> it's was pretty just, small. Yeah, there was nothing to it. It's smaller yeah. than the grip on my Sig. Yeah, yeah, you got to be a man to shoot that thing. Yeah, and I wasn't. If you've seen the video, I missed <laughs> nine times with it before I handed it over to you and said, "Daddy, will you finish this for me?" <laughs> It takes, yeah, it takes some getting used to. Now, I thought that the M60 
would be the this is a real man gun. Now it's pretty serious, but I would argue that that shotgun took a little bit heavier set of sack. Yeah, I mean, a shotgun's got a lot more recoil, especially one that small. Yeah, you know? and it did, like, it, it like, j- banged into my palm the way I was holding the, uh, yeah. the slide. Yeah, there's, like, a thing with shooting guns where you got to know uh, where to fight the recoil and where to let it happen, if that makes sense. You know what no, I mean? No, I wish you would explain that more. Okay. <laughs> because... No, I think you're tapping into something. I was at the gun range one time, and a guy was like, "You're you're you're too tight here, and you're not loose enough here." Right. And I I was like, "Well, this is confusing because you're saying do have a fucking grip on it, but also don't." It was, you know. Right. So I do think like, that you're on to something with yeah. where to let it flow and where to have it. Like like for example, if you have like a really powerful a uh, revolver. Like a forty-four Magnum or a right. five hundred Magnum or something He's like talking that. Talking dirty, Harry. Exactly, dirty talking. Yeah, <laughs> you're gonna, you're gonna, uh, you don't want to squeeze it too hard because then it's just gonna hurt your hand. It's like you need your arm to be rigid, but then you want your hand to be like not, loose. not loose, not right. floppy, right? But you know, it's just like like a nice firm handshake, and because that like, way it'll go up on you. Would you argue it's like? stiff from here back so you manage this but up here kind of have a, a nice more gentle so that yeah. you can kind of texture your yeah to a certain aim. degree because you want because you know, the recoil on a revolver it wants to go up and you want to let it go up right so if you're trying to like you hold do it want down to let it go up yeah if you're trying to hold it down too much it's just going to hurt you so you want to allow it to go up and also the more times you shoot you kind of know, you kind of learn, like, just as you pull the trigger, just to kind of let it, you know, you, it's a, it's, it's, there, there's, there's such, like, micro movements Adjustments, that it yeah. just, it's like a thing you just have to learn from doing, you know? Well, I mean, I was never um, a boring enough person to play golf. <laughs> yeah. But I would imagine it's like that or anything else where, like, yeah, you know how to do it, but there's micro adjustments. Right. And I feel like every time I go down to the range, which is in my fucking backyard, so you'd think I would be better. But uh, before we started this art video, I was just trying to hit paint cans, and I probably fucking shot the gun ten times before I hit it the first day. Yeah. Uh, now, today I was a badass. I hit it, like, first or second shot every time, so kind of feel pretty good about myself. <laughs> you, uh, did. you did. You nailed yeah, it. Yeah, let me just do that. <laughs> you deserve it. Yeah. By the way, it's Friday. Here <laughs> on smoke it. Here on smoke it. Here on like that. Yeah, sometimes you gotta smoke a blunt. <laughs> um, so I'm glad that we didn't smoke beforehand. I will just put that out there. I mean, I know I'm fucking Steve Jessup, but we're shooting a damn M60, so yeah. Uh, I think Rambo probably would have. You think Rambo probably yeah. got Rambo twisted was in definitely the... firing him up, you know? Why didn't they have that in the movie? Because you do hear about guys in Vietnam smoking yeah. weed and stuff. I feel, you know, I feel like they just cut it out because you know, at the beginning of Rambo, you know, he's dressed in a military jacket and right. the sheriff is calling him a hippie. Right. It must be because he caught him smoking a J. Right. But also because he got out. that pretty long hair. Oh, he did. Yeah, yeah. 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 Fucking Rambo hair. Yeah. yeah it just, just all greasy. His skin and muscles were all greasy. And then the straps. Am I remembering the poster? Is that what it is? I think so, yeah. Yeah, with the red and, and the yellow lettering. And, yeah. yeah. Maybe Rambo 2 might be the one you're thinking of. Um. Yeah. So my aim was better today, but I do want to get better at those micro adjustments. Mm-hmm. Um. You know, like, I feel like I'm concentrating on really getting my uh, hand up under that tang, that little mm-hmm. fucking tail there at the end, right. really tight there. And then, so then I got a lot of tightness there, and I really want to control this. And this hand I kind of keep loose. I'm going to try and, like, let the front part of my hand from here down be a little bit lo- loose. And more fluid. I think the best way to think of it is the best way it's been described to me is like a firm handshake. Mm. Like you just close the business deal. Maybe it's like 
I mean, not like you jack off yourself, but no, like no, maybe maybe how you jack off your friend because you don't know what kind of pressure he can take. Whoa, hold on. What? Pause. Hang on. <laughs> Suck dicks in hell! <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Whoa, what kind of show is it? What kind of show are you running here? Oh, I was just thinking, like, if you had a situation where you had to reach out. Like, maybe you had a, a really retarded friend who just needed a release. It's not, it's not gay if they're retarded. It's not. And maybe you're just like, let me just get this out of you, you know? But you probably would be a little gentle on the fingers. Yeah. This is probably a bad analogy. <laughs> oh no, I ain't care no. Let's talk about Rambo's sexy chest some more. <laughs> this show's taking a turn for the it fucked is. up. Um, I want to do something manly to change the gears here. Look at this thing you brought me now. I thought this would be mainly, and then as I hold it up, I'm thinking, this is like a big fat one going in my mouth. Yeah, but it's got tobacco in it. Okay, good point, good point, good point. That makes it. Tobacco makes it straight. Can you tell me? Thank you, by the way. Yeah, no problem. Also, this is, I think, one of the best cigars made. I would like to uh, address Mike Merrifield right now. Uh, you can kiss my fucking ass. You never bring anything. You know, I mean, if anything, <laughs> Silver Dicks, he comes in, he smokes all the fucking weed and never brings any booze or anything. So what is the name of this? It's a Xeno Platinum. And it's a barrel. It is a barrel. Yeah. Okay. Now, do I need to fucking, you got a nipper? I got a, I use a, so the way I cut. The way I cut my cigars is I cut a square in the back with a pocket knife. You okay. Knife? You want to show us how you do that? Go ahead. I'll hand that to you and then yeah. you can just use As far as I know, I'm one of the only people that, uh, one of the few people that does this because people in cigar bars are always just like, what the hell are you doing there? Yeah. I what? think it's I think it's one of the best cuts. So like, I used to use a, so cigar smokers out there that know, I used to use a punch cut, which is like a sharp circle and you push it down the back and it cuts a circle out. But the problem is those things get dull so fast, mm. and then you end up pushing on it, and then you split the back of your cigar. So I figured out at one point that if you just surgically cut it with a knife, not only do you get a deeper cut, but you don't split the back. Okay, yeah, I don't like it when it splits. I don't either. And, okay, so you're just going to go in, do a little surgery. I like this. We're learning shit on a Friday. <laughs> Yeah, get yourself a cold beer. Uh, I'm going to get another one cracked open with me. PBRs. God bless America. Wait a minute. We shot an M60, and we're drinking PBRs. That's a Vietnam And smoking right cigars. There. And smoking cigars. Old school. Did you realize that rhyme? God damn, we're drinking uh, PBRs and smoking cigars. It does rhyme. And it's America! <laughs> Fuck yeah! <laughs> now, I don't... You left... It's still in there. Do yeah, I just, just pull it out. Pull it out. There you go. Now, is this strong? And you gotta... No, yeah, no, they're pretty mild, these are. And you want to, like, uh, if you're not... You smoke cigars very often, you want to, like, roast it a little bit. Oh, this is so big in my mouth. <laughs> So you want to like, uh, ro yeah, yeah, pop the little top up on the torch, and then, and then you want to roast the end just a little bit before, and then before, oh, like, like before I start sucking on it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's what that's what he said. Yeah, yeah, yeah you gotta you gotta lube it up a little hey, bit first. Is there? Uh, there's always been that's what she said, but uh -huh. is there that's what he said, or is there? That's what they said. No, that's or? what he he said is just everything else. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know, just all the smart ideas. <laughs> what about all this? These new pronouns. Are there any of those? That's what. The, that's what they said. That's what they said. <laughs> that's what they. That's what. Them, that's what them said. There you go. Them had said that before. <laughs> Now, I think I did see Ron White uh, explain this on uh, Joe Rogan's podcast, is that he didn't want to pull through mm -hmm. right away. Right. Yeah. Do you want to roast it a little bit first? 
Yeah, there's like a whole... Now, I just have a, a bad tendency to want to take deep <sighs> down in my lung rips. No, you don't take it in your lungs. I know, but I'm used to smoking out of this thing, and so I just pulled half of that down to my taint. <laughs> yeah, no, <I'll> do that. <laughs> there's also a, a, a culture to cigar smoke. I'll tell you another okay. one. Another cigar thing yeah. is you never uh, snuff a cigar out. You don't ever, like, push it down into the ashtray to put it out. If you're done with the cigar, you just set it down somewhere, and then you let it ride. Let it... (laughs) 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 I'm already fucked up. (laughs) I like cigars. I've always thought... I'm I'm good, right? Yeah, 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 you're doing right. Every cigar, I feel like, has at least one good idea in it. Like, oh, yeah? If you so sm- we're going to get ideas? If you smoke an entire cigar, you're going to come up with at least one good idea. What? I would like to come up with some new ways to get my lady there. Hmm, okay. Because... Have you have you tried the, um, uh, the up and down? No, as a matter of fact, I think I learned that from Ron White, too. Oh, did you? Okay. Yeah. That's a good one. That's a different story for another day. But, yeah, (laughs) you got to know where to push up. Yeah. Yeah, you push up one side and then push down the other side. if... Uh... Uh... (laughs) Oh, God! Um... If you thought of it like... Like, what does that area in there feel like? Um, um, it like an elbow. Yeah. Okay, but not as pointy. But if you thought okay. of it like an elbow. Oh, okay, right? all right. But it's up in there. Yeah, yeah. And it, it has a little bit of a mm-hmm. point to it, right? Right, not yeah. a, It's very dull. <laughs> yeah, it is very dull. But do you... <laughs> now we're getting into the specifics. <laughs> I'll go like this so you can see. Do you... <laughs> go around it or do you give it like pressure pushes i think both i give it pressure pushes i get i find okay. the point right. pointiest part and then i just smash on that son of a bitch okay i think see i think do it all you know okay that's that's my theory um now that has worked but um she has me using this vibrator thing on the thing while i'm doing it hmm and it's just a lot. It's yeah. a lot to do this and this. And <laughs> that is a lot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do you have, like, I like it when a girl just reaches up and t- handles that part herself. Mm, that's true. It depends on how she does it, though. Sometimes you get some knuckles right deep in your pelvic right there, and that hurts. <laughs> 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 what kind of big hand bony bitches are you fucking? <laughs> God my damn, size. this bitch has got man hands. <laughs> Ow, my pelvis is fucking your knuckles, bitch. You want to fucking thin out your fingers, you big fucking shouldered bitch? I guess now you're a big dude, so you do probably have to get some bigger girls. Because you'd break a small... I bit little girls probably don't even want to come close to you. Yeah, right? I would say the shortest girl I've ever been with was 5'8". But the tallest girl I was ever... Now, with. that's taller than me. Is it? <laughs> yeah. I'm 5'7", and I'm shrinking because I'm getting old. Okay. You ready for this, though? The tallest girl I was ever with? Yeah. 6'7". What the fuck? Oh, my God. What kind of fucking mountain? Now, see, that probably didn't feel like a mountain to you. But, man, that would feel like fucking two bitches to me. Yeah. Here's what's fucked up about it, though. She was the first girl I ever had sex with. Oh, God. So now you have a thing for those. Not necessarily, but here's the problem. She had a small pussy. What? You can have a small... You can be six, seven and have a small pussy? Smallest pussy ever fucked. So I thought I had a huge dick. Uh, you got you got misled I got, about I your got pussy catfished dick size and right then, out of the gate, and then, then so you're coming to the part like I'm fucking huge. Yeah, I mean it's not unre- yeah not unreasonable I mean, to think that a, a it, six seven lady would buy. I mean, it's got to be pussy, like right? at least one of these. It's okay. It's fine. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> 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 Oh, oh, 
Hang on. Make me come. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Now mine's not going like that. Yeah, you didn't get a look good. Yeah. Well, I'm afraid I'm gonna rip it down in my throat again. <clears throat> no, you just yeah, you just you just take it in your mouth. Mm, that's that's what he said. <laughs> again, that's what he said. Take it in your mouth. Why, uh, Super Dicks, is there a reason why this show has gone so gay so quick? <laughs> I don't really... Oh. I feel like this could be your fault. Uh, Producer Mike's not here. I guess it's probably what it is. Yeah. There's no telling what he's doing right now. Um, probably trying to learn some of the same things we are about. It's a never-ending journey to the end of the vagina. It is. It is. I, I've, uh, I know this has been said before, but it is truly, a, it's like cracking a safe. Mm. You know, you just keep trying things until keep you noodling. just until you just hear that right, that perfect sound. And you're like, oh, okay, I'm going to stay on that. <laughs> yeah, but they're all different. So if you I'll get totally. used to one, and then... Yeah. Man... I need to smoke more blunts. <laughs> smoke a blunt? Because the mixture of weed and tobacco is so pleasant. It is. Uh, Except I, This is a great cigar because I feel great. Right? I told you, every cigar's got at least one good idea in it. I think, what do you think, what is, what's your opinion on this? I, oh, okay. I think tobacco and weed goes well together, but not right. in the same... Not in the same house. You know what I mean? Like, I don't like a spliff. You know what I mean? A spliff where they put weed and tobacco. That's what I'm saying. More blunts. That's what a blunt is. Well, but it's just a shell. I mean, like, when you actually mix tobacco Uh, with the weed. Oh, okay, yeah. I got you. You know what I'm saying? Now you're educating me. Okay. So a blunt and a spliff are different? I think the the way I understand it is a spliff is whenever you actually roll like you you have a 50 50 split a 50 50 split between like shredded tobacco and weed yeah but i feel like that's happened to me and i had two or three of them back to back and then i got sick to my stomach right yeah and it does that little thing where it feels like someone punched your adam's apple kind of success but a cigar separately. I mean, I perfect. smoke cigs, but this is just a whole different level of tobacco. It is. I mean, it's nothing like this. It's very, it's like very relaxing. Look, look at the difference. <laughs> it's like I'm smoking a fucking carton all at once. Yeah. Because I did hit it in just and it, it was with. great. Yeah. I kind of want to take more hits in. I mean, I would recommend it, but hey, it's your cigar, you know? Why don't you recommend it? it I, it's I feel like it's too much. I mean, it could sick. make you sick. Yeah, it could. And the thing is, you're gonna still get a lot of nicotine just from smoking it. Okay. Regular. Just right in the mouth. Yeah. And you also get some from just like even chewing on it a little bit. Okay. Like when I'm driving long distances, like late at night and stuff, I'll just have a cigar like in my mouth while I'm driving, and it keeps me awake. Oh, even you just even if it's, on? even if it's not lit. It's like a fucking big old uh, exotic bitch's titty nipple. <laughs> uh, what do they call those? Uh, yeah, what do they call those nipples that hang down? There's a name for them. Oh, uh, balloon nipples. Jungle or something? titties. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Are you allowed to say jungle cover this? Can you get that checked out? <laughs> I mean, that could mean anything, really. I mean, this. Yeah. This feels right too. Sitting on a like what what year uh, Silverados? This that's eighty eight suburban third row seat. Uh, the year I was born, eighty eight. I, I could have been conceived on this seat. Well, there is a weird stain right on the right <laughs> side. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's so comfortable. Comfortable. Yeah, it's an eighty eight. They need to bring back bench. I feel like bench seats in cars are underrated. You know what's great is like right under your armrest uh, arm there. Did you see what your arm is on? Ashtray. Yeah, how badass is that? Oh damn! I've been. Why wasn't you I can totally this? use that too? Fuck yeah! It's a big. This is awful. This is big ashes though. It's like when you go to the toilet, someone didn't flush, and there's just like such a big log in there, it won't flush. 
<laughs> that happens. Uh, I mean, I drank so much, I haven't shit a log in probably 20 years. It all comes out like hot, hot soup. Hmm. Yeah, that's that's what a lot of alcohol to the body will do. It ruins your gut biome. Some uh, Western fellow told me he's into yoga and stretching, and he's like, "Your gut biome's fucked up." And I was like, "You're fucked up." Yeah, this guy sounds like a pussy to me. Yeah, it sounded like one. <laughs> um, now I'm getting confused because I've got this, and I'm like, "Do I inhale this?" <laughs> yes. You want to get your money's worth. <laughs> I got high. <laughs> <laughs> what a great Friday this, this is uh, turned into. We get out in the back of the woods, shoot an M60. <laughs> now, the most uh, crazy thing I think I felt about shooting, or actually being around it, more being around it than shooting it, is when I stood directly to your right. As the shells were coming at my face, <laughs> the compression level was double yeah. anywhere else around that gun. I mean, my whole head was pop, yeah. pop, 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 pop. Like my, I could feel my whole fucking eardrums. I had ears on, I was pushing them on my head even harder. <laughs> yeah, the blast is incredible. Why is it so strong right off the right hand it's, side? It's based on the uh, the flash hider, so it has a flash hider on it, which almost functions. What is, I'm sorry, what's a flash hider? So, like, if you're being fired upon, right, like you know where the gunfire is coming from because you see the flash from the gun, right? So, like, most of the time you're just going to shoot at the at flashes because the flash. there's a guy behind that gun. Right, it has a flash hider. Right, but it doesn't totally hide it, of course, but it keeps it down enough. For the most part... Oh, it's fucking brilliant. What, it when is. was that gun made? Uh, I mean, it first started coming around in the late 50s. So even in the 50s, they were like, we got to cover up this we got to hide these flashes. Yeah. Fuck. Okay, so go ahead. Uh, but a lot of it, though, again, it's like you're still going to see it at night, but a lot of it is to protect the shooter because, you know, if you're getting a butt. So I don't know if you've ever fired or seen a gun fired that has no flash hider. It's just a straight barrel. It okay. creates a fireball. And when you're firing it, like, you can't see anything. It just blinds you, essentially. So right. most of it's for the shooter uh, to kind of keep that under control. I actually um, now saw where I'm sorry. Where was that on the gun? At, at the end of the barrel. Oh, that little thing that's kind mm -hmm. of pointy? Yeah, exactly, the pointy thing. That's yeah. a flash hider? Yep, exactly. Like AR-15s, they have Man, one. Man, I was thinking it, you were talking about something that was up near where the round's ejecting. No, 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 it's up at the end of the barrel. Yep. Oh. Uh, I, Man, I don't know. I mean, I grew up around guns. I've been shooting guns all my life, but it's like you don't know nothing. Yeah, like on a... Like, like a, I just, we just go out in the woods and shoot guns. Right. Yeah, like on a hunting rifle, you're not going to have a flash hider because for the most part, it's one shot. Deer don't shoot back, typically. I'm not uh, You haven't been deer hunting in Louisiana. Yeah, <laughs> okay, you're right. Yeah, <laughs> this fucking deer will shoot back at your ass. <laughs> oh. Guilty! Um, that's badass. So that's what that little thing is at the end. I was even thinking, like, when I was out there, I was like, I just like the way it looked. Yeah. On there, and I thought, maybe that was just a cool deck way to finish off the gun, but right. it actually uh, yeah. has a point. It does have a purpose. Would you say every single thing on that gun has purpose? And if Absolutely, it's... yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, it's, it's well thought out, for sure. Yeah. I mean, the gun has problems. We don't have time to get deep in the weeds of the mechanics of it, but it's it's a pretty good, good gun. It's good That's system. crazy to think in the 50s they were like, we need something that has belts of bullets. Right. Well, So that would have been World well, now War. That, now, belt-fed machine guns, now that goes back to uh, before World War One, even like the late 1800s when that was being developed. Really? What would they use to hold it together in the late 1800s? Uh, I mean, like the early Maxim guns, I mean, they were just basically like... They looked I mean, different. you had little metal clips... Oh, but yeah, the early ones that were That seems like fabric. highly machined. Right, the early ones were fabric. It fabric. Was, it was actually a fabric belt. So somebody, some some dude's bitch. 
<laughs> was sewing up these belts. <laughs> Seriously, yeah, they yeah. were. Yeah. And they had to leave the perfect amount of space. Right. And the reason they went away from that was because it's fabric, so it's not going to lock it. Well, no, it's not going to lock the bullets in consistently. You know what I mean? Whereas, like, the steel can really grab them. And then also, um, they're not disintegrating. So if you notice, like, as the, the belt is all together, as it goes in, but as it, it comes out in pieces. It's in pieces. So you, once you shoot it, you don't have to deal with it after that. But if it's fabric, you have to, like, save it, and it's hanging out the end of your gun. You know? Save it? You'd have to save it to reuse it Reload if you could. It. Yep. And then also, like, if you were on the run... Maybe you wouldn't want to leave it behind because you'd mm -hmm. be like, look, there's a big piece of fucking that they got yeah. one of those. And still to this day, like the Russian military, and I think even the German military, they don't use they, they use metal links, but they don't use disintegrating belts. So like when you're firing, the metal part is still like it's coming out the end and just hanging there. So wow. you could get tangled up in it. I mean, I mean, disintegrating belts, I think, are the way to go. All right, I'm about to put a big log in your put a log in there. That's true. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Such an amazing gun. I want to say all the amazing guns I've ever shot have been with you, Hiccup. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I still got one left you haven't shot. Now, the Barrett. Okay, we're going to shoot a Barrett. At That's a 50 point. cal. Yep. Um, unfortunately, we will not be able to shoot that in my backyard because but we. We'll find a place. We dra Now, how many rounds would you say we ripped through today? Uh, Not that many. Maybe like about 200. It's crazy because, I mean, it just goes so fast. Mm -hmm. And you shoot 200 rounds through an M60 in a neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> um, phone calls are made. <laughs> and, I mean, I say neighborhood. I, we got our land here and shit like that. These are big uh, pieces of property and stuff. But, fuck, that thing, it wakes people. You said people are having non flashbacks. <laughs> yeah. Some of my old neighbor dudes were like fucking sitting up in their beds, freaking out. <laughs> <laughs> it's a M60 is a very distinctive sound too. Oh my god, it's so rowdy! I loved it. That was great. And that what? Tell me the gun that we shot years ago at the Royal Range. Uh, that I think was an MP5 SD. It had the, it had the suppressor built into it. Right? Okay. Yeah, I thought it was like they said H and K or something. Like yeah, that. H and K MP5, H and K MP5. Yeah, with a suppressor. Right, those are sweet. Oh I'm my god, you one. could shoot that thing one-handed. Yep. So smooth with no ears. Right, that's and, what. And it was like. <laughs> yep, that's what. <laughs> when the feds come and get you, that's what they'll. That's what they're gonna have. Oh, no one will know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that my neighbors won't even hear that. Yeah, they'll be used to M sixties around here, but yeah, they will yeah. not be paying attention to a. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck me. Um, so the H and K MP five. Yep. With a big ass fucking banana clip in it too. Uh, and that the M sixty. Also, your M16. Now, that was a yep. special. That wasn't just any old M16. Uh, it was a full auto one. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That was fun. And he shot my Uzi. He shot my mini Uzi. Uzi, that's right. The mini yeah. Uzi with the foldable. Yep. That fucking yep. thing is, like, really on the same level as that MP5. It's, it, But the rate of fire is so much faster. It, it is faster. It spits them out like crazy. It is faster now. How is how is that possible that it does? Well, how how do different machine guns have a different rate of yeah. fire? Yeah, so it depends on the action of it, right? So like the M60 is is pretty slow because there's a lot that happens. There's a a lot of travel to the bolt. You got like this series of springs and buffers that will kind of slow it down, right? As it comes back, um, and then the MP5 it has this like delayed roller blowback system okay uh basically which would be a lot to try to explain but the reason the uzi is so fast is because it's strictly blowback it's basically a big chunk of steel that's heavy enough and has a spring behind it to block the chamber and 
is it basically just you fire as the round as it goes it back, comes it, back and it comes back. So it just it, it's rep- not repeating. Right. There's not, not a lot as much mechanical. Yeah. There's business. not like a decision that someone made to make the yeah. rate of fire a certain way. It's yeah. just the way a lot of these guns are designed. But also, it's, isn't that gun have the smallest round out of all these? Well, it's the, the Uzi and the MP5 are both nine millimeter. Okay. Like the like the MP5, I think its rate of fire is like it's like around seven or eight hundred or something like that, and then the Uzi is like twelve hundred. It's when you say twelve hundred, what? Like rounds per minute. Per minute, they go by sixty seconds. Yep. Because exactly. you would shoot the fucking gun sixty seconds. I mean, that's an eternity. I know. I know. Yeah, you couldn't actually do that. <laughs> you couldn't. Yeah, because you don't. It, you can't have that many oh, rounds. It fires, like, uh, a whole magazine in, like, two seconds. So you could never actually tell. But, you know. Okay, so what's a magazine hold? On which gun are we talking about? So the Uzi hold. I think both the Uzi and the MP5 standard mags is 32 rounds. 32 rounds. Mm -hmm. So you got 32 nines. Yeah. You're in a mall at Christmas. And, (laughs) you know, I'm thinking some diehard scenario. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) And, uh, yeah. And it's, you know, after hours, mm-hmm. and you catch something going on, you got, you know, so you have probably a couple more 32s on your belt. Right. And you then you're just two seconds. Two yep. seconds. And then I'm. Yep. <laughs> right. I think the advantage of that is, like, a lot of people think of, like, spraying across an area or something yeah. like that. But the advantage of, like, a submachine gun, it's like you're going into close quarters, you're going into, like, a house, let's say, you, and then, bam, a guy pops out trying to kill you. So, so it's you like were literally just spraying. Pull the trigger. Well, not necessarily. I mean, a quick pull of the trigger, it's going to put, like, five or six rounds on that, you know, assailant in such a quick amount of time. So you're still targeting? I mean, it's not for the oh, purpose you're still aiming of just it, spraying? Yeah. No, no, you're still aiming it. It's just a matter. It, it's kind of like a shotgun, right? You fire a... A uh, shotgun with double out buck, then one pull the trigger, put nine pellets on something. Okay. So it's the same idea, except if, that. Yeah, if you're training, that's true. If you're training with that gun all the time, you're not draining 30. To, you, you're right. you're very precise, I would imagine, down to the like number. Like Oh, definitely. You, do you, can do learn. you know that, what that number would be like if they're training you to... Um, you know, go through a house like special forces and stuff right. do on target. How many is good enough? And then I'm moving on right. three, four. Like two. I know, like with my Uzi, like if I pull the trigger like this, like that's five rounds easily. You know, probably. Right. So, so you're just giving it a nice, good squeeze, drop the target, move on. Yeah. And think about this scenario, right? This is where like full auto, I think has application is like you go into a house and then all of a sudden there's two guys trying to kill you at the same time, right? So a semi-automatic, you might have to do like one shot, uh, one shot, and th- one shot on this guy, one shot on that guy, and then come back to this guy or whatever, right? right. So it'd be like boom, 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 something like that. Whereas if you have full auto, especially with a fast rate of fire, it's like, brap, brap, you know? So you put like four or five rounds on each, Yeah. you know? I always hope that I'm going to get to the second guy before he shoots me. Right. Because it's in movies, it's like that guy's got a chance because you're over here. Totally, yeah. Um, it's but tough. a lot of people are terrible shot. I mean, myself included. That's uh, why the you got to you know. get down to the damn range and practice yeah. that shit. Run some drills. Yeah. That's Hell, like, yeah. They say, like, uh, Wild Bill Hickok, you know, the famous Western, the, the famous Western figure. Yeah. The reason he was so effective wasn't because he was a great shot. He just had something where um, he could be calm in a situation where he was about to die. Mm. And other guys would be pulling their pistols as fast as they could and trying to get rounds off. Right. And he would just calmly pull his gun and take aim and bam, put that shot right where it needed to be. Now, do you think that was uh, in him from the get-go? Or was that something that he just realized everybody's freaked out? If I just stay calm, I'm always going to... I do learn it. It's probably a little bit of both, but the way that he was talked about and he was uh, ice cold. I, I think it was like kind of just something he just had. You know what I mean? Because maybe also back then, like it might have had to be a way that you had to learn to be uh, just to survive, like 
card games and shit like oh, that. Oh, harsh, harsh environment back then. Harsh environments, people wanting to kill you all the time. You had to be kind of like icy cold. Right. Not totally. show your your weaknesses. Right. And maybe just, yeah. But he that is true. Whenever you can, again, like we were talking about earlier, you know, you do have some tight parts, but... Mm-hmm. Whenever I just let all that go and like almost exhale and just get real like zen with it, right? You know, to say gay stuff. <laughs> um, also, I feel like in a in a dangerous situation, you get this rush. Like if you're a man, you get mm. this rush of testosterone and adrenaline, and it's like you want to. F- and the the testosterone is like the in the survival instinct. Adrenaline is like the motor skills. Right. And I feel like it's like you almost want to focus on the testosterone aspect of just like just being at peace in the moment and fucking raging hard. Handling the situation. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever shot a gun with a hard penis? No. That's that's something to work towards. It is. It is. Really? You're an idiot. Ladies and gentlemen, on a Friday, could you ask for a better hang? I mean, I could keep going. I hate that you have other uh, places to be. This man's a big time YouTuber. Check out their YouTube channel, Hickok45. Also, follow John on all his socials. This man does stand up comedy around Nashville and in Chicago and on the road. You can see him. He's got. This, how big of a comedian he has residences in both Nashville and Chicago. This man is just buying houses wherever he does comedy. <laughs> Go see John on the road doing stand-up comedy. And thank you for hanging out. On hey, Friday. thank you for having me. This is great. Cheers. Uh, we're gonna we take it out with the sticky icky two. This is a fucking band right here. Pickle in the juices. Woo! It's been a long week of working, Joe. My fingers are bleeding. This is a good fucking Dude, I am so fucked up. Yeah. Woo! Summer dick! Once again, didn't do fuck nuts. Oh, nothing. These guys don't. I got fucking two or three of these cocksuckers who show up. They don't do fuck. Woo! Riding with my gun. I, I'm riding with my gun. I have my gun out. Riding with my gun. <laughs> The rule of women, we just because. Yeah! 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 I got shit to do. Yeah, women. Sticky hickey too. That was the best one yet, man. That was that was it. Call it.